Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we have all been waiting for. Well, we're really waiting for September 1st, because that's when we can talk about the builder, and that's what probably everyone on this channel cares about. But at least we can talk about gameplay and some bad stuff, and it could kind of link to the builder. And y'all are going to see, but we got a ton of stuff to go over in this video. NBA 2K24, real gameplay. We're going to be going over everything from new adrenaline to ankle breakers and dribbling, defense, new power badges, strength, everything that everybody's been debating on Twitter, dunk meter, layup meter, the new throwout dribble animations, the mid-range and post-game, three-point hunting, and the new settings available on NBA 2K24. I'm not messing around. Drop a like on this video. 25,000 likes on this video, man. Let's start 2K24 off with a bang. Because I ain't going to lie. I was in that community today. Everybody was over there socializing and doing all this stuff. And I was locked in for y'all. I was locked in. I got 10 videos lined up for y'all over the course of the next few days. I'm going to put them on the screen right now. You're going to see we're covering every single type of build along with a full builder breakdown. And then we have, of course, this video right here, NBA 2K24 gameplay, man. A ton of stuff for y'all. If you're not subscribed, make sure you sub up. Turn on the noties, because we got 10 videos rolling out over the course of the next few days. Let's get into this NBA 2K24 gameplay. All right, let's talk about the new adrenaline system, all right? So as you can see, I'm spamming size ups and escapes and, and behind the backs and all this stuff. I don't lose any adrenaline until I drive in the and the body contact gets initiated with the defender, right? But there's, it's not as simple as that. There's a lot more to it, okay? So now, check this out. Explosive behind the back, momentum's, not losing adrenaline on any of that stuff, okay? So 23 dribbling system is way different in terms of when you lose adrenaline. But as you can see here, I drive with Kobe, I lose an adrenaline right there, right? I lost that second bar of adrenaline when I drove into the defender, but now check it out. I do the same drive from the other side, Look it, I don't lose any adrenaline. Why is that? Bulldozer on silver pops up. So these strength and power badges not only help you get, like watch, see that little stiff arm animation to throw the defender, right? Throw the defender to the side. I also keep my adrenaline on this play and I'm assuming it's because of that animation. It's almost like if you win that physical matchup with your opponent, not only do you obviously get into a better position on the court to potentially score or create points but it looks like here sometimes you'll even save your adrenaline bars okay something to know but let's check a let's take a different look at this right so not only that bulldozer badge there's also a badge that kobe has called physical handles and i'm thinking maybe that ties into it as well right it's almost an identical drive from the left and the right but on the right i get that stiff arm animation and i keep my adrenaline okay but Let's look at this from another angle. Okay, this is a different play here. You see I have two adrenaline bars. I get the blow by animation. Bulldozer pops up in the top right corner, but I still lost an adrenaline, right? Let me show y'all. Let me rewind it back, right? I started this play after this replay. I know it's a little... Uh, I wanted to do it in this format where I could just kind of freely talk to you guys and, and give it more of like a person-to-person -person explanation because I could go into more detail for y'all so that when you do end up creating your builds, take this stuff into account deciding what you want to do, okay? But as I was saying, I have two adrenaline bars, right? Bulldozer pops up just like on the last play I showed you, but I still lost. Look, at I'm going up and I only got one adrenaline now. So even though Bulldozer pops up, you see over here in the top right corner, apparently Bulldozer activated but I still lost an adrenaline. So I'm not exactly sure what constitutes as like losing adrenaline and not in terms of these uh, physical badges. But obviously you guys saw in the last one, I didn't lose it. This one, I did lose it. So I'm not positive, but that's just something I noticed in terms of, of trying to figure out how everything works, all right? Just looking into Kobe's badges here. I mean, he has a ton of badges, right? He has a ton of things that are gonna help him in terms of keeping those adrenaline, winning those physical matchups, right? I don't know if you guys saw, he has big driver on gold, right? You guys probably saw these in the courtside report. He has blow by on gold. We already saw he has bulldozer on silver, physical handles on gold. So maybe some of these other badges are things that come into play in terms of whether you keep or lose that adrenaline as you drive into your opponent, okay? Also obviously getting those animations to try to, uh, animations that we we would consider clamp breaker animations as they told us are split into these badges and as you can see these badges are tied into strength so that is a big thing we're going to talk about in a little bit is like 
in order to unlock those badges you need strength but the strength actually come into play in terms of the actual gameplay like that's something we fell for last year with the bully badge we're going to talk more about that when we talk about the new power badges but i just want to show you right here the stuff that kobe has and uh how how it's affecting the gameplay you're watching all right let's look at a couple more uh plays here in terms of adrenaline loss so it's not just when you're getting bumped like look at i'm fighting for this like crab dribble here against devin booker and i kept three adrenaline bars the entire time right like he's bumping me here he's bumping me i'm like getting some bump here trying to get a crab on him in the mid range i'm getting like a, a a low crab dribble snatch back i still have three adrenaline bars the whole time so it's not like any physical contact makes you lose adrenaline okay so it it is very situational and it seems like it's it's mainly when you are driving into that opponent and their their your your body and like there's a there's a not just a body up but like a like a not a I guess a full speed body up where like two forces are colliding that's really when I notice you lose adrenaline the most okay that's basically the new adrenaline system you can run left you can run right you can spam combo dribble moves you can do anything you want and from from what everything I saw you don't lose adrenaline unless there's that full speed meetup of body up contact all right y'all let's talk dribbling and ankle breakers all right i know it's a big topic last year ankle breakers were really rare essentially you know you had to have like space creator get takeover shot creator take over and do hop steps but as you can see right here i like i mess up the dribble move and i just snap lonzo to the ground with curry right so Ankle breakers are definitely back. I didn't like get a ton of them. Like obviously I'm showing you the same clip over and over again, but definitely like this is, this is, you know, I'm putting him on the ground with a simple snatch back and he has gold. You see in the top right corner, Curry has gold ankle breakers. So ankle breakers are definitely back. Obviously we're gonna have to find the moves that trigger them the most consistently. Um, I'm sure playmaking boosts obviously are gonna help like they always do. Um, the level of ankle breaker that you have, maybe some of the other dribbling badges, maybe amplify or you know increase the percentage of how often you'll get them. We'll have to wait and see, but they're definitely back as you can see right here. Now, in terms of dribbling in and of itself, dribbling felt very different, I will say that. The gameplay overall felt a little slower. Maybe it's just because we haven't figured it out, but there's definitely still some explosive launches you can get. Comboing up feels really smooth and nice. Like as you can see, like that's like a, let me rewind that back for you guys. Like I know it's nothing like crazy, but I was just testing kind of the smoothness of it right here with Kyrie. You see a little momentum behind the back from John Morant right there. Decent, maybe momentum behind the backs are back. That's something I know people miss from like 2K19 days. The, you know, being able to momentum behind the back, spin back, momentum, momentum behind, momentum behind the back, all that stuff. It looked decent right there, and that's John Morant's SIGs. Maybe there's better SIGs that'll get an even bigger launch forward, so we'll see. But this is what I want to talk about. Comboing here, like with Kyrie, it looks really smooth and nice, and honestly, like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just spamming stuff, trying to figure it out. But even, like, that quick launch right there from KD is, is, is something that, shoo, like, that's a nice little crossover launch. And then even comboing with, comboing with KD feels way different than comboing with Curry. I mean, then than Kyrie. Comboing with KD feels different than comboing with Kyrie. And I think part of that is the pro play. Like it did feel very similar. Now in terms of part, I mean, I said similar. It felt very different, but it felt similar to how they move in real life. It really did. Like you see Kyrie's got his little, you know, head fakes and all that. And, and KD's is more lanky and, and drawn out animations and they feel very smooth. But what I was going to say, how it plays into the park and actually being effective in terms of beating a human being, we'll have to wait and see. Because obviously, take all this gameplay with a grain of salt. I'm playing against the computer. To shake the computer is completely different than to shake a human being, right? But there's definitely some good animations in terms of like that little slide behind the back. I'm going to replay it in a second. But it like, you see how Kyrie's moving. It's nice. But that like slide behind the back, it's almost like not an ankle breaker. But if I continued running off of that right here like i feel like right here i could probably i know it's Kyrie, so i'm not gonna take off and dunk maybe you're my player if he has a high dunk you could you could split them right here and go take off and throw it down but even with Kyrie, i feel like if i took one more dribble into here maybe start to use those new finishing badges like the euro step badge or, or the spin finisher or I, I don't know the names of them but if you i think it's called two step or something like that spin cycle um, if you if you read the course side report, you saw the new finishing badges. Maybe I could use that in here and, and get a nice layup with Kyrie. So we'll have to wait and see kind of how it all plays out in terms of when it's 
you know, online gameplay, human versus human, but there's definitely some good dribble animations and it feels very different. For example, I was I was trying to do like, you guys know like uh, like the KD hot back everyone did in 23, the LeBron hot back everyone did in 23. That was a simple rule, right? Right trigger, flick the right stick down, you do a big hot back. Not on this game, I was trying to do it. My dude was doing a cross back, he was doing all different. So even the dribble controls are different. So we're gonna have to, gonna have to get in the lab and figure some stuff out because it's definitely um a different feel to how the game moves okay in terms of dribbling but as you can see you know katie's got them long lanky dribbles you got curry here uh, one little detail i'll point out right here that i think was cool is the way that the defender is crowding curry and you see curry kind of like picking his head up like he's looking over the defender like waiting for draymond to come up and set the screen it's just a small detail i thought it was something cool that i noticed here like peeking his head up to try to see over the defense that's a, that's a cool little addition but as you can see curry moves a lot different get the crab dribble when i miss because i suck but um <laughs> curry moves a lot different than Kyrie, and ja moves different than curry and kd moves different than that you know what i mean so that is nice it definitely looks different now what i will say obviously i don't know how pro play is going to translate to the park but hopefully we do see stuff like this where you play a guard one game and he moves different than another guard and another guard hopefully there's a bunch of different dribble moves that are all viable options and it just comes down to preference as opposed to just one dribble move set becoming so much better than anything else that everyone ends up moving the same now i know it's a video game video games usually have metas especially in 2k there's always meta dribble moves that majority of the community is going to use but i think if we could get variety and effectiveness on the same level that's going to be a beautiful thing to see people playing with different moves on and moving different so it's you know it's not repetitive all right but we'll have to wait and see the last thing i'll say is right here jimmy butler this is the computer i'm defending the computer and he kind of does watch skirt he kind of hits the walk back so walk back cheese might be back i'm not really sure but it did look pretty quick and again that is the computer hitting that walk back dribble so there's definitely gonna be uh, cheese, as a lot of people call it, right? There's gonna be stuff that 2K didn't mean to be effective that ends up being effective. It's a video game, it's just how it works. And if we got the computer hitting the walk back on us, Lord knows what the hell Steezo's gonna find out, all right? So that's my dribbling recap. Let's move on to the next one. Let's talk defense, all right? It definitely felt better in terms of body ups. Like that first clip right there, check that out, right? I'm just bumping him and it bumps him to the point where this is Gary Payton the second. So pretty good perimeter defender going against Gordon Hayward. Decent ball handler, not a great ball handler. And look it, I bump him so much it makes him stumble and bobble, bobble the ball and it's like a forced pickup. You see what I'm saying? Like it made him pick his dribble up just because I was bumping him. Now remember, this is me defending the computer so take everything with a grain of salt right this is not a human versus human this is the ai but definitely felt different in terms of how you attached to the dribbler and bumped him and bodied up again perimeter i mean uh, i said perimeter even on the interior it felt like you stayed between your man in the basket better if you were in position like this is jamal murray driving on uh driving on beasley and you see like i'm in a decent spot i play hands up defense you guys know the ai is usually very good at just greening layups like that it's something that the ai has always done really well play hands up d make a miss we'll have to see but that is a good sign in terms of paint defense again it's playing against the computer take it with a grain of salt but that is a nice example there of what i'm talking about again bumping the dribbler here definitely feels different than it did in 23 playing the guy's hip here bump 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 and then i don't know if y'all can see down here <laughs> i don't know bro dude just made a 47 percent contest at the buzzer so yeah definitely feels different but uh there's still gonna be that uh yeah i mean we bumped them up bumped them up bumped them up chucks up a shot 47 percent contest and he makes it like i don't know i don't know okay anyways again just some paint defense walling up good stop and that was sasha vujicic like that's not you know <clears throat> that's not prime to, to kembe matumbo that's keith van horn keith van horn right i'm saying that 
I think it was Keith Van Horn. Going up against Sasha Vujicic, who was a guard. I know you guys probably don't remember Sasha Vujicic. But I get between him and the hoop, wall up, play hands up defense, and I get the stop. So that is a good sign. Now, in terms of bumps, not only on the perimeter, but in the paint, check this out. Right? I, I bumped Jason Terry. This is Kobe, obviously, an elite defender. This is prime 2006 Kobe Bryant. Okay? I bumped the drive, bumped the drive, play hands up D, and look at He pump fakes, and then I just... Basically, as he goes to pass, I think he just throws it into me. But my, my point is, I'm able to wall him up off of the drive, right? He doesn't get a blow by or anything like that. Ass feet pops up. This is a new perimeter badge that helps you slide your feet laterally more quickly, right? Slide my feet, get between, wall up, and end up getting the stop, right? So that's, that's good. In terms of the plucks, as you can see, Kobe has gold glove. I went into the ratings to look. He had a 95 steal and gold glove. Again, take it with a grain of salt and point against the AI. But all you lockdowns out there, I'm not going to lie. Between glove and that right stick ripper, which reward, or not rewards, but uh, well, yeah, rewards you for flicking the right stick in the right direction. It gives you a boost to your steal. I think you guys are really... <laughs> you guys are going to enjoy especially the beginning of the game when people don't know how to dribble and they don't know the meta moves and and all that you guys are going to love like you, you i was tearing it off them i was tearing it off them okay so you guys are definitely going to like it small detail as well some of you guys might care some of you guys might not right here kobe doing that little you know mama thing or you know you know sticking the chin out you know doing that thing that he used to do so that's a nice detail they added. It looks looks really, really good. But tearing it off people with that gold glove, I can only imagine 99 steel and, and Hall of Fame glove and all that stuff. We'll have to wait and see. As you can see, a badge right there popped up at one of the new badges right here. Um, 94 feet. As you read in the course side report, right? That's a badge that helps you press people. 94 feet. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? But all these new defensive badges coming into play, we'll have to see which ones end up being the best and, and, and really help. But again, I'm playing against the computer and I'm tearing it off them. Now, I didn't go into the settings to show you, but I think when I was playing those Mamba moments, um, I think I was playing on Superstar. I wasn't on Hall of Fame. I was on Superstar. So... I mean, it's not like I'm playing on Rookie, but I'm tearing it off him on Superstar, so we'll have to see. But as you can see, I'm just scrolling through Kobe's badges here. He has 59 badges, a ton of them gold in Hall of Fame, right? So I, I was just scrolling through. You see gold clamps. We're talking about defensive badges, right? Gold glove, gold interceptor. Like, he, he's obviously a very good <laughs> defender in his prime. Off-ball pest on gold. And then some of those new ones I was telling you, uh, well... Not new, but pick dodger, but then also uh, the, the new badge, 94 feet uh, that we were pointing out in the game. He has a ton of defense. That one right there. That one we were talking about as well. The right stick ripper. Lockdowns. I really think you guys are going to really take advantage of that. Not not necessarily abuse it, but uh, yeah, maybe y'all are going to abuse it. I think this badge right here could be really, really underrated and... You know increases the chances of getting steal of stealing the ball from the dribbler or intercepting passes when using the right analog stick so instead of just spamming x you know you gotta flick directional and it would give you a boost so i think you know you get that on hall of fame with hall of fame glove 99 steel people don't know how to dribble in the first couple weeks of the game they don't know meta dribble moves they don't have unpluckable up some of these lockdowns are going to be going crazy in the beginning of the game and i challenge you i challenge you don't complain about it until we actually figure the game out, right? Even like shooting and all this other stuff. Don't complain about it until we figure the game out. Otherwise, you guys are going to influence them to start to patch stuff. And that stuff that gets patched causes other problems. And it might not even be a problem. It might just be the dude you're playing against has Hall of Fame right stick ripper and Hall of Fame glove. And you're out there with bronze unpluckable. And you wonder why he ripped you three times in a park game. Get your badges, figure out dribble moves, figure out how to play the game, and then if anything is super broken, we can we can request them to make changes. But in the first week of the game, just because you're missing open shots, don't be complaining for patches when you have no badges and you have the worst jump shot base in the game on and you just don't know it yet, all right? So that's defense, let's keep it moving. All right, let's talk about the new power driving badges and animations and all that type of stuff, all right? so. You're gonna see there's still blow by animations in the game and this badge up here blow by is a badge that okay 
So I want to make sure I don't say the wrong stuff because I'm not allowed to talk about the builder. But a lot of this information has been released on Twitter. So blow by paired with the badge speed booster, which is basically quick first step. Neither of those badges tie to strength. So small guards can get those badges at very high levels. And that's going to that's going to be how they slide past and blow past defenders. But for the bigger ball handlers, right? Like Giannis has blow by on silver. Somebody like uh, <clears throat> a prime Russell Westbrook is going to have that thing on gold or Hall of Fame. But the badges that Giannis has, like gold and Hall of Fame, are badges like bulldozer and big driver and um, physical handles and those types of badges. Okay, now those are the badges that I feel like the bigger ISO builds are going to use to get past defenders on the perimeter because they're not going to be able to get speed booster at hall of fame levels right because they don't have the necessary attributes to unlock that badge at that high of a level but let's talk about in the past right there's been this big debate about strength is it finally going to matter because it's never mattered on ball handlers in the past now i say ball handlers right because for centers and defending the post and holding box outs and getting worm animations, even in 23, strength mattered in the paint in terms of big men battles. But in terms of ball handlers, it never mattered, okay? Like, okay, bully was a fun idea, but it did not work out. But the main reason being is because animations like this, which still are in 24, to activate bully, you essentially had to go up with a layup, a contested layup in the hope for the animation to happen. like. Those are still in the game like this, right? Like LeBron puts his shoulder into the dude, goes up, gets a layup, and I green it. But here's where the strength argument for 24 comes into play. And I'll just lay it out right now. I'm not on either side. I don't know yet. I don't know if I want to go with strength of my ball handler or not. <laughs> but I will lay out the argument for both sides and I'll show clips to back it up. For the, so, so for anyone interested, this might be a little bit of a long discussion, but there's a lot of details to analyze, okay? So all the people saying strength has never mattered, I ain't falling for it again. I 100% understand that. And I might, I might even go that route to start. I'm not sure. But the thing I will say that they have changed is the fact that, see, Bulldozer pops up right here for Kobe Silver. I do not take a shot. I do not take a shot. I do not take a dunk. I do not take a layup. So in order for this badge to fire, to, for to activate, I'm saying, all I have to do is just drive. Like, it's not like Bully where you have to take a bad layup and hope you get the animation. Bulldozer pop. Now, I didn't keep running towards the basket. Obviously, I stop and like walk back right here because I'm just testing out, trying to fire this badge. And I talked to Wolf. Wolf is a former 2K League player who was very involved in the builder and badges and, and, and 2K24 as a whole. And I said, Wolf, if I'm gonna invest strength into my ball into my ISO big, my ISO build, like my big ISO build, if I'm gonna invest all these attributes into strength to unlock these badges, they better activate a lot. Otherwise it's not worth it. And he said, Oh, they activate. Like they are going to fire just from you dribbling on the perimeter anytime there's contact. So that's something to think about. Also something to think about is the fact that in 2K23, essentially to get blow by animations, obviously there's the badge blow by, but I'm talking about, you know, slide by and all these animations. For example, my point is what I'm trying to get at is if in 2K23, let's say Clamp Breaker required strength, a lot of people would have put strength on their build to get clamp breaker because it was one of the best badges in the game but clamp breaker whether you had 25 strength or 99 strength you would get it at the same level in 2k23 now you have bulldozer and all the you know physical handles and all these other badges that you need a strength rating in order to unlock and last year the only strength rating badge in terms of finishing was bully and we already talked about the flaws with that the fact that you had to take a contested layup to even have a chance of activating it the fact that bulldozer activates just from me essentially trying to drive past an opponent it kind of makes me think there well again it depends on how online gameplay actually ends up being but i think their thought process is okay the smaller guards they're going to rely on high badge levels of speed booster 
and blow by. The bigger builds, they they can still get speed booster and blow by, but they won't get them on as high of levels as the smaller guards. So we need to give them an advantage and their advantage is gonna be able to get bulldozer, physical handles on higher levels. And then the really tall players, there's a badge called big driver now. So I think that's their thought process. How it all plays out in terms of gameplay, we will not know until we get into the park. But I think that's their thought process, and that's what I would consider when you're in that whole strength versus speed debate, and if you really think you need strength. The one thing I will say is, let's say you make a bigger ball handler, right? <clears throat> and you don't get blow by and speed booster on high badge levels, right? So let's say you get into this situation here where a defender's bumping you, and you go no strength. And my concern would be like, okay, since I didn't get like a clean run by him using my speed, now I'm in a physical battle. If I don't have those like big ball handler physicality badges, am I just gonna get stonewalled right here and just like boom and just get knocked back by the lock? And now I, like, now I'm, I'm done. Like um, I have to try to drive all over again. Or maybe if I have the physical badge advantage over him, am I going to be able to do what Giannis does right here and basically just use your forearm and just push him into the paint and then go up with a layup or a dunk? I honestly don't know the answer and none of you know the answer. It's all just opinion based. If I'm going off a of past 2Ks, strength never mattered on a ball handler. But also they never had all these badges that help that help you get to the basket based on your strength rating. The only one they even tried, I feel like in the past was Bully. And we talked about the, the problems with Bully, the fact that if Bully activated when you just drove and it gave you more blow buys, people would have put strength and tried to, and, and not tried. They would have used it along with Clamp Breaker to get to the basket, but it was just the fact you had to go up with a layup. So I see the, I see a valid argument for both points. We won't know the answer until we play the game online for at least a few weeks. People do badge testing. People do rating, animation testing. We'll see. But anyways, in terms of big driver badges, they added in, well, this isn't even a big driver badge, but it is a finishing badge. It is a driving badge. This two-step badge that helps with Euro steps, like that's a clean animation. I really like how that Euro looks. It's like a, it's like a contact Euro, yeah, yeah, and then I missed time to dunk, but the animation looked really clean. There's also like that spin badge, and there's other badges to help too. This is the badge I'm talking about right here. This two-step badge improves a player's ability to make Euro step and cradle layups or dunks. There's a bunch of new finishing badges. I'm really excited to test them all out and like see, you know, what's good, what's not good. Strength, speed, how that debate all figures itself out. Um, Strength matters in the paint. I can 100% confirm for big men in terms of battling in the in the post, battling for rebounds. That mattered in 23, though. That's not big news. Does strength matter on perimeter players in terms of defending and handling the ball? I can give more information and more opinion once I'm allowed to talk about the builder and actual badge thresholds in terms of like attributes and all that. I can't talk about that embargo has not lifted on builder information so i can't really answer the whole strength versus speed and, and does strength matter and all that in terms of guard builds because i need to be able to talk about ratings and badge unlock levels and all that stuff okay so hold off on that i will have more information in a couple days once the embargo lifts i'll talk about it in the my player builder breakdown but i'll also talk about it when i talk about big iso builds and i dropped the lebron build and all that type of stuff all right but let's move on to the next all right let's talk about the 2k24 dunk meter first things first you can still get contact dunks without using the dunk meter i mean as you can see definitely get some crazy animations even without the dunk meter but there's been big improvements to the dunk meter i will say all right so check it out first things first as you guys have probably heard it is green or miss 
on the dunk meter, but it's not as crazy as it was in 23 in terms of the green window size. Now on some contact dunks like this, yes, it's very precise. You're gonna need to be skilled and get used to timing it very precisely. As you can see, like I'm missing dunks because I'm just slightly off. But when you go up for an open dunk, as you can see right here, it's not even fully open. The defender's like, you know, in the vicinity but he's not in a good position like that's a pretty big green window and you're gonna see on other ones like it's even easier to time than that when you're wide open so that's a big improvement because last year you know a lot of people wouldn't even try to meter dunk because they're like man if, even if i'm open it's still like kind of precise now obviously last year it wasn't green or miss but this is nice that you know depending on the quote unquote difficulty of the dunk and probably depending on your badges in ratings as opposed to the defender's badges in ratings the green window size will actually change on the meter itself so that is a really nice change and visually obviously it's it's obvious you can see the difference like you know relatively open you know defender out of position dunk bigger green window obviously defender between me and the hoop much smaller green window and you have to green it to be able to make the dunk and that's going to be the same on the layup meter that we're going to talk about next but in terms of even some contact dunks like i said you know Giannis doing the little crown stuff it matters your ratings your badges versus defenders ratings and badges and like obviously Giannis is an absolute freak of nature um even going over who is this here uh i don't know he's relatively big though pause and you can see Giannis's <clears throat> green window is still like damn near the size of like kobe's was when he was going up with a pretty much open dunk and this is a contact dunk so as you can see it varies and it depends on the situation which is obviously in my opinion a w like that's how it should be that's how it should have been in 23 and they're just making that improvement now on uh 24 Giannis has gold posterizer as you can see in the top right corner but there's also other finishing badges like that one right there <laughs> as we were talking about it he's got precision dunker on silver All right so there's other finishing badges this year not just contact uh contact finisher that are going to help you in terms of the you know increasing that green window size and making it easier for you to make those dunk meter dunks so overall definitely w's in that department now you might also notice that even like this is a contact dunk right it's like that running contact dunk with a dude on your back but you still see the green window size like even though it's a contact dunk he's in a bad position so the green window size for kobe is still like what i would consider really like big you know so it's not just uh open dunks obviously it depends on like we've talked about already attributes badges all that stuff you know open dunk for lebron on the break it's it's pretty much a, a huge green window open dunk you know lebron on an open drive dunk meter green window is really big defender on your hip and it's a guard you know you could just bully him and and it's uh oh we got a lob here too for y'all it's it's very similar but yeah like i'm saying depending on the situation open dunk even a contact dunk doesn't matter it all depends on the ratings the attributes badges and it all varies in the green window size so overall just i think really big improvements and then alley-oops are pretty much the same in terms of how they work you know just timing it in terms of that meter just like 23. so overall big improvements to the dunk meter i think in my opinion again take it with a grain of salt i was just playing against the ai but someone who's really skilled with the dunk meter in this game can definitely utilize it like you'll like you'll definitely utilize it and what i think will differentiate people in the dunk meter even more in terms of like a skill gap I know Harris comes with the, oh, there's no there's no skill in dunking. Here we go with the whole conversation. I'm not trying to get into the debate. I'm just saying there's the skill gap. Like before, people could make early dunks and late dunks and and all that. Not anymore. You got to green it. So whether that's a really tiny sliver of a green window or a much bigger green one, you have to green it. So I think it increases the skill gap in terms of using the dunk meter. Let's talk about the layup meter. And I know, let me pause before we get into it. I know all you sweats out there are probably gonna be like, layup meter, ain't nobody using no damn layup meter. Well, Mike Wayne put that tweet out and said, I would recommend you at least give it a try. Now, trust me, I know, I wanna play in Pro-Am and I was playing for thousands of dollars and all that and sweating my heart out. In 23, I did not use layup timing, okay? It was 
essentially too risky. Like I might miss time and open layup and miss. And I didn't want to do that. Standing layups, driving layup, all that. I didn't want to miss for no reason. You just turn off layup timing and like pretty much if it's open, you're going to make it. But they've made some really nice changes to the layup meter, similar to the dunk meter, but let's take a look at it, okay? So first things first, obviously in terms of it's green or miss. So yes, that is still a thing, green or miss. But the increased green window size for standing layups and for driving layups in terms of situations, in terms of attributes, badges, positioning, all that really matters, right? So you see right there, that's Jokic against bam and look at how big that green window is and i wouldn't even say bam is in a terrible position here like it's not a great defensive position like obviously like he's a little late to contest it but look at that green window size now look at this next clip from Shaq. like i think we're gonna talk about i can't get into ah, i almost blew it i can't talk about builds and stuff yet but you guys are gonna see when i get into the builds i think this is gonna be something insane for not only centers but post scores and yeah, we'll talk about that at a later date. But what I can talk about here is like, look at Shaq gets off the drop step inside position. As soon as the, the layup meter comes up, it's all green. Like I literally could not miss this even if I tried. Like, I guess maybe if I just held it all the way and it came all the way back down here, maybe I would miss. But literally as soon as you see the meter pop up, it's green, the whole thing. So I feel like in past years, right, or not past year, but in 23, like layup timing off, you get in this position, like this guy could still like play hands up D or press Y and get a contest and like make you miss even though he's in a bad spot. Now it's like green or miss. If you have layup timing on, like you're gonna green this. Like, yeah, even if he gets like the Jokic one, like Bam got a contest, but because Jokic is like size and like, look at down here. Um, <clears throat> I know the freaking, the little drag thing is kind of covering it but 14 percent coverage on that Jokic layup with layup timing on still greened it you know what i mean so i think layup timing in terms of not only driving layups but standing layups is going to be insane like if you're really skilled at it you're going to be able to finish really well around the hoop from everything that i gathered playing again against the computer take it with a grain of salt we'll have to wait and see once we play online but even like the driving layups and stuff like that spin badge spin cycle I, I i keep calling it spin cycle i'm not sure if that's what it's called but and then like the euro step badge and all those all those badges are definitely i think gonna come into play in terms of timing those layups and getting that bigger green window and trying to do that but look at then there's situations where i kind of question i'm like bro how am i making some of this stuff so like i'm cold with kobe here because i'm just spamming like I'm just testing stuff out, right? I'm just spamming layup meters and mistiming stuff. So I'm cold. And I drive in here and like, I don't know if you saw the size of the green window. It's still pretty damn big. And I'm starting this out by the free throw line. Who is this? Doug Christie? Or, oh, I gotta let my dog out. But whoever this defender is, right? Like, I know it's not probably a, an elite defender, but that's a damn big green window, especially for somebody who's cold and I just green it over him. So, and there's these end, like... Look at how big that green window got. Like, I know it's LeBron, but like, it went from that to like, got smaller and then like randomly got really, really big. So like, I don't know exactly what's triggering here. Like, why did it go from this precise little sliver of a green window to the whole thing being green? Very, 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 very interesting. I gotta let my dog out. I'm gonna take a five second intermission because I'm gonna edit all this out, but I'll be right back with the next clip. All right, next let's talk about the new throw out dribble animation. All right, not a huge detail, but it is new in the game. It is pretty cool, right? So off the rebound here, you see Giannis. I'm gonna tap the right trigger and I get a huge like throw out. Oh, it's called throw out dribble, but a new, a huge like speed boost forward where you throw the ball out. I almost got bump stolen by, what was that, Capella? But um, you see with Kyrie here, you know, depending on the player, it looks a little different depending on how they do it and, and their dribble style and all that. But definitely something cool they added in and and i could see it in terms of 3v3 and 5v5 in terms of trigger and fast breaks you know like that big boost there like obviously in this situation the whole defense is back but you know you rip down the rebound in the park and maybe like two people are in the paint and you do that throw out dribble now you're pushing the break 2v1 hit him a little magic johnson <laughs> Or, you know what I'm saying, whatever, but <clears throat> I could definitely see it being viable in full court game modes, and it's going to be uh, interesting to see just kind of like how much space, because obviously, like I said, the whole team is back already in a lot of these clips, 
but it, it playing you know person versus person you know instead of playing against the ai maybe if it allows you to like real like that is a huge throw out like if you do that <laughs> it's Giannis, obviously but i'm going like from free throw line to damn near half court in one dribble you're like boom you're already gone so you might be able to get an advantage and create space on the break in terms of like 3v3 5v5 game mode so definitely something new they added in small addition but definitely a w and like i said you know Kyrie looks a little different doing it than Giannis, and then Giannis right here and then it's almost like you even see right here on the second dribble like obviously the throw out dribble but then look at the second dribble like it's almost like he's got the ball like and he's really like still like throwing it out in front of him like that dribble right there doesn't look like a normal like sprint dribble and then even that one it's like you're covering more ground so if it allows you to like not only get that initial burst but then like get downhill like like there used to be a badge in the game that i would have i think it might have been called downhill or something like that but if it allows you to like actually once you after the throw out run faster down the court and attack like that would be something like definitely to look out for next let's talk about mid-range and post game all right so a lot of stuff they they talked about that you know oh we we nerfed the three the three point fades but buffed the mid-range fades and then of course you know all of like sim nation and all them dudes on twitter were going crazy talking about you know they're gonna be unguardable and then i definitely think the mid-range game could go crazy now obviously threes are greater than twos in terms of math and it depends on the game mode and i'm not trying to get into that whole debate i'm just trying to tell y'all what i felt it definitely felt like mid-range shots were crazy and i kind of touched on it before and again i can't talk about builds but in terms of like the the layup meter for standing, not just driving, but standing layups, I felt was really glitchy. And about to talk about the post game, but oh, scores. I'm, I, hey, you guys know the real OGs. Listen, the real, the real OGs of the channel. You guys know in 2K17, I was a post score. Like that was my primary build. I'm not telling y'all what build I'm gonna start with this year, but all I'm saying, all I'm saying, I don't know, okay? Now, the post game in terms of the fades and the hop shots was looking real glitchy. Now again, take it with a grain of salt because I'm playing against the computer, but some of this stuff looks glitchy, all right? So now it's Jokic, so I'm testing out the SIGs and it's just a regular fade and whatever. Now let's start to test the hop shots, okay? This is against Lowry got the switch on me, so I understand. Okay, so Jokic, it's a post hop shot. I shoot over the guard. As you can see on the bottom left, it registers open. But here's where it starts to get really glitchy. And why I'm thinking post scores this year might be something vicious. Okay, I can't talk about bills yet, but I'm just saying. Okay, so once we get into the builder videos, we'll talk, we'll talk about post scores more in depth. But Look at this, bro. Hop shot. Like, bam is late on the closeout. I will give you that. But it's essentially two, kind of, three people underneath him. And it's open. I'm just thinking, like, a 7-3 max wingspan post score. All I'm saying. Okay. Let's... We'll have to see. we'll have to wait and see, but definitely something going on, right? Like I said, I mean, if this is how it's looking, then you got that standing layup meter where the whole thing is green when you get inside position and all that. In order to counter like a big post score, you're gonna need a big center. I don't know. Y'all see where my brain is going again? Obviously, I can't go into detail about badges and thresholds and attribute layouts and all that you gotta wait a couple days until the embargo lifts okay but you will get what i'm saying like you're starting to see kind of the vibes that they're talking about mid-range game and post game and it's looking vicious because i was sitting there i have only tested the fades and the post hop shots i was like you know what i haven't tested a post move yet right i haven't done a spin i did the drop step with Shaq, but i haven't done a post spin yet is what I meant. I've done drop steps. I haven't done a post spin. This is Jokic versus Bam Adebayo. Bam is a pretty good defender, right? Definitely above average. Borderline elite. Let's not debate players. He's a good defender. And look at the first 
thing I do, the first post spin, I promise you, it's the first post spin I tried, I get this animation. So not only they're adding in a layup meter that damn near fills up the whole bar if you're in good position. Not only they made they buffed the post fades and hop shots in mid-range game. Not only they added in all these new big man post score badges that we're gonna get into when we get into the builder. I'm gonna show you all the thresholds for every build for every badge in the game. We're gonna talk about the post badges, of course. We're gonna talk about all the badges in the game. But even without post badge, you can get throw animations on. I mean, it's not like I'm throwing, you know, Tyler Hero. I'm throwing Bam out of bio. So. And then I miss a, a green standing dunk. So that's another topic we could talk about. But y'all get what I'm saying. For all of you mid range post score demons out there, it, it, it's looking good, bro. And, it, and it's not just for big men. I mean. You know, I had a clip in here too, like, what was it with, uh, yeah, with D-Book right here, right? Going to the post, do a little shimmy fade, pull up. I mean, it, it looks beautiful. Like, it looks just like D-Book with that pro, those pro play animations. It looks really gorgeous. I'm not going to lie, bro. Like, that is literally how D-Book moves. Like, beautiful. But post game and mid-range game definitely, definitely look viable. Definitely. Let's talk about three hunting. All right, let's talk about three-point hunting. I didn't get a lot of clips. I didn't spend a lot of time hunting for threes. Now, obviously, this is Steph Curry, so he's got, like, the best shooting badges and rating on the game, but you definitely can shoot from deep still, okay? I mean, obviously, that's with... I think Curry has a 99.3, but that is on Hall of Fame, and like I said, I mean, you're shooting from deep, deep, and obviously, he's got probably every shooting badge Hall of Fame, but you can definitely shoot from deep. Now, I didn't... I tried a few fades, but I didn't really spend a lot of time testing gameplay. I was more into trying to like figure out the builder for you guys obviously that drops in, in like two days but in terms of three hunting it's definitely going to take a little getting used to in terms of like getting open off the dribble like dribbling is so different like we talked about you're definitely going to have to get used to it but just a couple clips here i mean shooting behind screen shooting off of like a little quick stop i mean that's a 27 percent contested green so i mean depending on Depending on the game mode, the defender on you, you know, it's LeBron shooting behind the screen, it's green. Now this last clip, again, I don't remember. The first clip I know was Hall of Fame, obviously I showed you guys that. I didn't pause it after every shot I made to see what difficulty I was on. But just the fact that, okay, this is KD, right? Just the fact that this registers as open, like he's late to get a hand up, but he is right in position, like, he is like relatively close, like not relative, he is right underneath KD. But like, if we're talking real life and it's a video game, so I don't like saying that, but like, yeah, this would not bother KD. But in past 2Ks, like this would be like a ghost contest. Like, okay, you're in the area, so you just get a contest. But I guess maybe hand placement like really matters now or like pushing up on the right stick. Like I shoot over him right here. Like, again, his hand is not up at the release. I don't know how this is going to be online. Obviously, we have to wait and see, and it probably depends on like your rating, his rating, badges, all that. But this registers as an open shot, as you can see down to the bottom left. And I mean, again, it's playing against the computer, so take it with a grain of salt. But like, I don't want to sit here and like say like, oh, like big shooters are going to be lethal. You can shoot over people, but it potentially like I'm not. It's, it's, you know, if this registered as a 40% contest just because this dude's standing here, well, then it's like, not nah, like you're not going to shoot over anyone, but it registers open. So again, it's the computer difficulty level matters, ratings, badges, all that matters. We'll have to see when it's human versus human, just like everything else. But just something I noticed when I shot this, I was like, oh, it's definitely gonna be contested. And I was like, damn, it was open and I greened it. Okay. The last thing I got for y'all in this video is settings. Okay. So not a ton of like things to show you but in terms of that shot timing visual cue you see the new choices you have right there's no more early late very early very late you have you have uh you have push you have release you have jump and you have set point okay now most of the time i was playing i was playing on release because i was thinking like okay i 
I know most people, I would say majority of people played on early or late in 23. Now I was one of the people that played on early, like I didn't really like late and I feel like early was a lot of time it was like, kind of like the ball like by your forehead and I feel like that was like kind of, I guess maybe so depending on the jump shot you're using pretty close to like when the ball would be coming off your fingertips which would i would assume be release i'm definitely going to test out all four options and see what i like the best i don't feel like i was super comfortable with release but maybe that was because it was brand new and i was only playing the game for like a couple hours so definitely gonna have to test out all the uh shot timing visual cues obviously i've talked about uh the layup meter i was someone that always just turned off the timing but i definitely recommend like mike wang said it i mean mike wang we don't always believe what he says but i'm going to try to keep layup meter on and i think it's definitely going to be worth it like those standing layups are insane now like the fact that the green window size changes so drastically depending on your positioning it eliminates my thought before in 23 which was like i didn't want to miss an open layup because i mistimed it now it's like if you're open like damn near the whole the whole meter is green so you're not going to miss anyways but it also allows you to like have some skill on those difficult finishes and like the one remember the first one i did with Giannis, where like i went over the top of the defender the, the green window was small but because i timed it i made the layup i feel like with lamp timing off i'm probably going to miss that because it's a contested layup so I think uh, definitely experiment with that layup timing, uh, keeping the layup meter on and the layup timing and all that. Also cool, you can change the shot meter location and you can also change the shot meter size, small, medium, and large. So they definitely give you some visual options to like find something that you're, you're most comfortable with. But that's kind of my overview on NBA 2K24 gameplay. Now again, take it with a grain of salt. I'm playing against the computer and I'm a park player. I'm a pro-am player. I'm an online player, okay? But I wanted to try to test out the new things they added in in terms of like those blow-by, bully ball, all those animations, the layup meter, the dunk meter, um, test out that mid-range game for you guys because they said they were going to buff that settings all the things we touched on i think you know just to get a feel for how different you know the dribbling the dribbling felt very very different that's going to take that's going to take some getting used to for sure but i just wanted to test out and kind of show you guys some differences in the gameplay now the big video that i know all you guys are waiting for is that my player builder breakdown and then what i also plan on doing is i have eight more videos on specific builds but i it's not just specific builds because like to make like the best build right now we haven't played the game online to really know what the best build is but what i did was i got a i got one video for each type of build small guards big guards stretch bigs inside bigs post scorers poppers lockdowns etc etc so i'm gonna drop a video on each specific build type to give you guys more information so when you load up 24 on that day one you're going to be in that builder for a while but hopefully i could save you some time and hopefully save you from making some mistakes because you know there's nothing worse than making a trash build on day one all right so hopefully all these videos help you guys out for launch day of 2k24 if you enjoyed the video please drop a like subscribe if you guys are new and turn on those noties because we got nine more absolute bangers dropping in the next couple of days. I appreciate y'all watching. Catch y'all in the next one. Peace.